our last day. Dead bodies, landslides. Pretty excited to get to our hotel tonight. I don't know if I'm gonna go through this without crying. Okay, it's our last day. We are heading down to have lunch where we stayed the first night. And then we have a, a very bumpy three hour drive, uh, only three hours, not 13, uh, back to Pokhara. And uh, we'll spend the night there. We're gonna go out, get some food, explore Pokhara tonight. And then tomorrow morning we fly back to Kathmandu. We have tomorrow in Kathmandu. And then we say goodbye. Whew. These last couple days coming down have been rough. It's hard to uh, underestimate how hard going down can be with this many stairs. People's knees are just destroyed and screaming at them. Everyone's trekking along, but yesterday was really rough. It was a very, very long day. It was definitely not what we were expecting. And all of us ended up getting in after dark. So it was kind of a stressful day, but we survived. These porters, it's, I, I don't know how they do it. It's insanity. They are carrying so much weight in sandals up these mountains. I can't imagine being that kind of shape ever in my life. It's insanity. I would love to know how many steps we've done, uh, at least in the thousands. Um, it's a lot of steps. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of steps. Starting to get gross. My pack smells. We all know how I feel about personal hygiene, but I'm gonna have to get used to it if I'm doing the Pacific Crest Trail, because I'm gonna be real, real gross. I'm gonna have to learn to like it, or at least not hate it. You know, the way down on these trails is always a challenge because. We've already seen all of this. We're tired. There's no more, you know, huge pinnacle to look forward to. And downhill is hard. So, we're feeling it, we're tired. Maybe a little grumpy, <laughs> but it's pretty hard to be grumpy someplace like this. All you gotta do is stop, look off the side of the mountain. Absolute insanity what they do. I do not know how they can carry all that weight up these mountains. I can barely carry my weight 
up these mountains. And this Duga back there, well, that's one of our assistant guides. And he's hiking in Crocs, because this is just a casual stroll for him. He is literally carrying a refrigerator. Um, our group of porters were incredible and so kind and very, very fun. And they were carrying, they, I think Discovery Trek told us there was like a limit. They had these big duffels. Um, so they were carrying about 40 pounds or an additional backpack or two additional backpacks. Anytime any of us needed support in like, or we just couldn't carry something, they said, that's okay, we'll just strap it on. These guys were carrying much more weight than, than we were told they were allowed to, and they still kept a positive attitude, made sure to check on us. Um, our porter Nissan was carrying a bag, or carrying a duffel and a backpack. These duffel bags were huge. They often looked taller and wider than any of our porters, and they just had them on their backs. We learned so much about them, like where they grew up, how old they are, what they do for fun, how proud they are to work as a porter, which felt really cool. We passed other teams that weren't talking to their porters at all, and it, it didn't look like any fun. Our group felt like, oh hey, we're all in this together and we're all carrying different weights, but we're all gonna make it to the same destination. Oh my gosh, they were amazing. I don't know if I'm gonna go through this without crying. Um, the porters, they were, the nicest person, people that I met in my entire life. They were always smiling, although they were carrying, I don't know how many pounds in their back. Um, every time that I was struggling, I would look at one of them and they were smiling or they were dancing. And uh, it's just like gave me energy to finish my my journey, like for me, it was a bucket list to get to Annapurna Base Camp. And uh, I, I don't think I could have done if they were not there all the way with me. It's, we are so ungrateful. I feel ashamed uh, for all the things that I have and see that they don't have a lot, and they are so happy, so... The experience wasn't only physical. I think for me is to reflect, reflect about myself, my life, what is important. Things are important or people are important. I need to evaluate or reevaluate what is important for me. And I think that's gonna be so good to go back home, you know, sit down and think with myself, <laughs> talk to myself and um, set some goals. Day. We're on our last climb, enjoying our last few minutes with this view. <sighs> We're almost done. 
I just took a little stop to get uh, some drinks and snacks and things. Um, but we're just headed right down there. That's where we're gonna have lunch. And then we've gotta walk across that suspension bridge. But this time it's daylight, so we're gonna be able to see what's below it. I don't like heights, not one bit. Wow, we just witnessed a pretty substantial landslide and rock fall situation. But the guides say that nobody lives over there, but it's a interesting reminder of how dangerous this stuff can be. <sighs> Glad it's the last day. Dead bodies, landslides. Pretty excited to get to our hotel tonight. <laughs> It's been amazing, but I'm not gonna argue with a bed in a swimming pool. <laughs> you know, every trip that I've hosted, every trip, there have been at least one or two people who have really pushed themselves and like really achieved something awesome, but never as many as, as on this trip. This, without question, has been the most challenging trip that I've hosted, and we got a bunch of badasses on this trip. It's been really incredible to see. So many people on this trip have really, really, some, some really incredible reasons for being on this trip. And I don't think there's anyone who hasn't pushed themselves beyond what they thought their limit was. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool for them. It's really cool for me too. We're done. We're back where we started. Girls, we did it. <laughs> oh, it was so much harder than we were expecting. But it was gorgeous, it was amazing. But I'm ready to pop open a beer. Oh, it's an Arna. It's local. <laughs> yeah. Girl, you did it. <laughs> oh, how are your I knees? Just killing me, but I'm alive. I can move with the best. Are so you proud dude. of yourself? I am. You should be. Yes. tonight with them. Oh. I just want to give them the biggest thank you. Yeah. 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 I would like to say thank you to you all and Kedar and you are the best. Yeah. Yes. And everybody did an amazing job, especially Vimal who carried Woo. everything Woo. for me. Yeah. Thanks for bringing us safely up and down. Thanks for showing us the best sunrise ever. And thanks to the best port of the center. Thank you for allowing the dream to come true. And may we be sad for all you did for me. <laughs>
We are literally feet from being finished, but uh, the last thing is to go over a rope suspension bridge and uh, there's a traffic jam currently. It's not a human traffic jam. It's a donkey traffic jam. The cutest of traffic jams. That is how everything gets here. Uh, those are propane tanks and they will go back to Pokhara to be filled and then they will have to be driven three hours here and then hauled up into the mountains on those donkeys. It is such a wild way of life <laughs> that as a very pampered American I cannot even imagine and you know things as we went higher got more expensive and <laughs> it's easy to see why honestly our beer should have been $30 a piece if you ask me. So I'm super scared of heights. Little known fact. And when we came over this bridge, it was dark, so we couldn't see what was below us. That's not the case today. I'm not crapping my pants, you are. All right, here's the pants shitter. I'm so scared of heights, and we're walking on this bridge. <laughs> It's so much scarier when I can see what's below. It's so unsteady. Jenna, how you doing back there, girl? <laughs> Are your panties still clean? Because mine aren't. <laughs> this, is, this is a little low end of stress for me for whatever reason. Cool. I'm more of a claustrophobia than a... Okay, fair enough. Well, this is my nightmare. <laughs> Like it's moving so much. It's so weird for these trips to come to a close. I mean, we've still got a couple days of travel of getting back to Kathmandu, but the hard part is done. The pretty part is done. And it's always bittersweet. I am excited to have a bed in the hot tub, but I'm really gonna miss being lost in the Himalayas with these people. We've We've had a pretty bonkers time. Hard, but pretty cool. So now we have a three hour drive back to Pokhara um, on that same road <laughs> in those same Jeeps. Uh, and then we have the night to ourselves. Uh, they seem to know what they're doing because our hotel is a nicer hotel for the pool. So, we get to relax. We get to pamper ourselves a bit for, for a night. And then tomorrow morning we fly to Kathmandu. And then we spend the day in Kathmandu. Okay. Yes. Oh Lord. This is absolute chaos. <laughs> there are all these jeeps picking up dumb American tourists who are dumb American and probably smart Korean tourists uh, who have finished trekking. Um, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's such chaos, but they know exactly what's up. They're like getting it done. Bags are going on the jeep. We're getting in their jeeps. We're heading out.
walk from here. <laughs> <laughs> So we made a pit stop. I think you might have a tire issue. They're checking out a tire. I don't know. Uh, so something's wrong with our uh, Jeep. So we're just gonna get into the other Jeeps and they're gonna put all the porters into that one. It's just gonna take them like 30 minutes to fix it. So they're gonna stay behind. We just have to move into this one. Um, okay, we were moved into another Jeep. So the Jeep that we were in has to be repaired. I think, was it a flat tire? We don't know. Who's to say? Who's to say? For some reason, we had to switch vehicles. But we're in the back on sideways seats. And When I go home, I think my transformation is that I'm going to slow my life down. I'm going to take a little bit of the slow and steady. The gentleman kept saying to me, slow and steady, slow your pace, slow your breathing, slow and steady. And that's what I'm going to take home and I'm going to hopefully share with my students as well. That's my transformation. <laughs> I learned that you can put 15 strangers together and they can get along really well. <laughs> I learned that I can challenge myself. I can set goals and I can accomplish. Even though it's hard, it's challenging, but I can get there. And you can be happy with little. We don't need a lot. My advice for who is, you know, like challenge, and like to get to know other cultures, do it. Like, of course I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> but everybody should do once. <laughs> That's what I, I believe. Want to watch another video? Click here. Want to learn more about my upcoming trips? Click here. Want to subscribe and like all my videos and turn those bell notifications?